We're on site now, we've prepared our pair of road tubes, we've selected our site. Uh, here I'm using an anchor point of one of these um, low bollards across the road here. That's purely for this instructional video. Obviously when you do a real survey you wouldn't choose a low bollard like that because someone will just come and steal your logger straight away. You'd use something like a tree or a post or something that's a, a much more sturdy. Um, one note though, don't use pedestrian grab rails. Uh, they're for pedestrians, not for traffic survey equipment. So you need to be mindful of any potential tripping hazards. This one is good, assuming we had a decent anchor point across the road because there's no footpath or sidewalk. Uh, it doesn't present much of a hazard to pedestrians. So let's get into this. I've got my tubes paired up, ready to go. Just throw them across the road. Hopefully this is elegant. Just playing them out loosely and it doesn't matter if vehicles occasionally drive over your hoses while you're installing them. So we're going to install the hoses now. We start with one hose. When that is installed we then work with the second hose. So it doesn't matter which one we choose first, just get them untangled here. So we're installing the first hose now and we're just watching for oncoming traffic. It's, as I said this is a very quiet location. So we install the first road nail and notice how I'm using a washer. Safety glasses. Just start the nail. And you're basically using the weight of your mallet to get the nail into the ground without using too much force. And we don't hammer the nail completely home. We want to keep that washer a little bit loose to facilitate removing the, the road tube afterwards. So that's sufficient for now. So we'll just uh, get the logger side of this first hose installed. Now what we do here is we want the tube to be perpendicular to the traffic flow or the curb side. Now it doesn't need to be super duper accurate. You don't need to use a set square, just a, a calibrated eyeball will be sufficient. Okay, so we're going to install that, that one about there. Normally we're facing the traffic. Okay, for the second hose, uh, we want to install precisely one metre from the, uh, the first hose. Um, obviously the way to do that will be with a tape measure. And we measure that, measure that out to a metre, and with a lumber crayon, just simply make a mark. Just something you can see. And there's our metre spacing there. Or alternatively, what you can do is measure off one of the nails with you, your pre-prepared gauge and you can see I've got it spaced to exactly one metre there. Get your figure eight, nail, washer and using the, uh, the gauge you just simply start your nailing hard up against it. And one of the reasons we use aluminium is if we have a miss hit, we're not going to shatter anything. If it was timber or uh, plastic, you might end up breaking it. But aluminium bar is going to be very robust. Okay, log aside. So we just pull the hose through, place our gauge, Just 
move the gauge out the way. Right, what we want to do now is apply tension to the road tube to help keep them nice and secure to the road and keep them parallel with one another and returning back to the uh, starting position once a vehicle has gone past. How much tension? Approximately 10%. So we've got about a seven metre carriageway here, so we'll pull through about 70 centimetres. So that's approximately there, pulling that amount through. And this is where the figure eight cleats are helpful because you can easily adjust the tension. 10% there. So one test is to lift the hose and it should peel back to the road. Okay, what we now need to do is make sure that the tubes are the same length. So just walking backwards off the carriageway, just evening out the length there, making sure that one tube is not excessively longer than the other. Okay, so you can see there I've got both those hoses very approximately the same length. There's not much difference between them. Um, differences of plus or minus around about uh, 15 centimetres aren't going to make any difference to the uh, recordings, but once you start to get it beyond about uh, 30 centimetres or so, it will start to affect your, your, the accuracy of your results. So we do need to get those tubes nice and even. Now, you can see why I've wrapped one of the tube with the yellow tape. That's going to be my A tube. It wouldn't matter which one it was. This can be my A tube or it could be my B tube but at least I know which one's which after I've wrapped them around the pole. So we'll just make this nice and neat. Nice and loosely around the pole. And that will do for now. To uh, increase the uh, duration of your traffic surveys and add security to the road tube, you can use the uh, centre line flaps to provide that lateral stability to the hoses. We'll quickly install those. Just note, these are intended to be used as saddles, not folded over. They're not, they're not intended to be used folded. The saddles, the, uh, the centre line flaps, we want to keep them out of the wheel path. So you can use them at the centre line here and you could potentially use them at the middle of each uh, trafficable lane out of the wheel path. Try to avoid using them in the wheel path. So here we've prepared some uh, bitumen tape with the uh, cloth backing tape and you'll see why the cloth backing tape is important in just a few moments. But I've got the uh, gas torch here, even though it's a nice warm day today, just to illustrate, you can give your bitumen tape a little bit of a warming up just to soften it up, ready for application, that's all it requires. That's now super sticky. Peel it off over the tube and onto the road. Other lane.
And there we have a completed road tube installation. So now that we've finished installing the tubes for vehicle classification surveys, there are four things we need to check before we look up the box and leave the survey location. The first thing is that the tubes must have the correct spacing. If we've installed the tubes with a metre spacing, we need to check it and make sure that the value we enter into the logger's header during setup is the correct value. We can use other spacings, we don't necessarily have to use a metre, but if we use a different spacing, it's important that we enter the correct value into the logger's header using the setup software. Secondly, the tubes must be installed parallel to each other. Thirdly, the tubes must be installed perpendicular to the traffic flow. Usually, being perpendicular to the traffic flow is equivalent to being perpendicular to the curb, but that's not always the case, so you need to be careful about that. If vehicles are crossing your tubes at a non-perpendicular angle, then effectively you've got a different tube spacing. The fourth point to check is very important, is that the tubes must be the same length checked after you've installed them. So after you've applied the tension to the tubes, you need to just check and double check that you've got them the same length. Okay, so just to summarize for vehicle classification surveys, check your tube spacing, check that they're parallel, check that they're perpendicular to the traffic flow, and check that they're the same length.